Now let's get started. So last time I did a video, I didn't show you what's under the hood. So I've gone ahead and released the hood. So under here, of course, you got your radiator, you got your um, overflow jug for your radiator, you got your fuse block, um, you have your brake fluid reservoir. This is your uh, relay, a stinger or something like that for your winch. So that's what's under the hood. Um, if you're gonna put an extra battery in here, there's a nice spot right here that an extra battery would fit. I don't know if I'm gonna put my battery there or not. I'm gonna add an extra battery for every, other things like uh, radio lights, other accessories. I don't know where I'm gonna put it. The oil that goes in here is 10W40 oil for most climates in the United States. If you live way up north, you might wanna think about putting 5W40 oil in there. I live in Mississippi. It gets um, hotter than, well, it gets really hot in Mississippi in the summertime, so I'm gonna run 10W40. Uh, speed limiter. A couple of people replied in the comments on my last video and said, hey, does that thing have a speed limiter when the seat belt is attached or not attached? So if your seat belt is not plugged in to this buckle right here on the driver's side, then you're limited to 25 miles per hour. And that, that's a safety feature. And the Honda Pioneer, the Polaris, I think all of them do that. So you need to keep it to half throttle for the first 10 hours or 100 miles. And that gives your belt time to wear in. And I don't know what all it does, but the, the thing that they told me most is that it gives your belt time to wear in. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but you know, it sounds good. Keep it at three quarter uh, throttle for the next 10 hours or 100 miles. Okay, so let's talk about Bluetooth for a second. So this machine comes equipped with Bluetooth, though I'm not sure how much good it is. Um, if you notice, there's a Bluetooth icon right there on your display, all right? If it's blinking, then it's trying to pair. Right now, I've got it paired to my phone. You can see it says CF Moto 13A 1D5, paired up just fine, all right? Set the phone right there. So here's what's crazy. Let me step out here where I can show you in the light. On page 77 of my owner's manual, it says right there in the center, press the SEL button to answer a call, press the ADJ button to finish a call. All right. So guess where the SEL button is? There's not one. What they mean is the SET button, which is right down there on the bottom of the display. So let me get this straight. So to answer a call, they want me to stick my arm through the steering wheel and push the SET button. And to end the call, they want me to push the button on this side, the ADJ button. Seriously, who designed this function? Because that makes no sense. You should never stick your arm through the steering wheel when you're driving. And it's crazy that the manual says press the SEL button when they clearly meant SET button. I don't have an SEL button and I've looked all over this thing. So I think what it, this is designed for is if you wanna use your phone while you're driving and you don't wanna hold your phone like that in your hand, you can have a headset on. The headset can be paired to the phone through Bluetooth the phone can also be paired to your vehicle through Bluetooth. What they intend for you to do is to push the button on the dash to answer and push the other button to end the call, but that's just dangerous. Never stick your arm through a steering wheel. In fact, I go so far as to say that's stupid. Don't ever do it. I forbid you to do it. Um, anyhow, it does have Bluetooth. It does work. I paired it to my phone, paired up just fine. In fact, it shows up twice on my phone. Just don't ever do that. Okay, so the next thing is the winch. So the winch is right there. My winch is a 50 foot winch. Uh, my owner's manual right here says it's a 35 foot winch, but I tested it, I measured it with a tape measure, it's a 50 foot winch. So that was a pleasant surprise. So I went and looked up the specs on the motor and it actually has a pretty decent motor. So the winch they put on these machines is fairly decent. No complaints there at all. Okay, next on the list are the grease points, also called Zerks. So you've got five on each rear wheel, you've got two on each front wheel. So let me show you where they are. I've tried to light up this area down here. So anywhere your connecting bars um, pivot at the engine side or the wheel side, you've got grease Zerks. So you got one right there, one right there, and there's one right over in there. Let's see if I can get my finger up there, right up there. You have one down in here, which you can't see, and there's one up in here, which you also can't see. Uh, they're almost hidden. 
So a YouTuber named Ironhead Biker did a great video on this showing you where the Zerks are and how to grease it. He suggested to put 45 degree angle Zerks. I completely agree with that because they're almost impossible to get to. So on the front side, anywhere that your A-frame meets the engine, there's one there and there's one down there. Okay, here's the gas cap. It's on the driver's side. So on top of the cap, there's this little uh, slider thing that goes side to side because this is a lockable gas cap. So you put your key in, it uses your ignition key, put it in just like that. And I like this. I think it's one of the best features that they've added to this machine. So let me show you how this works. So let's see, first off, right now, my gas cap is unlocked. I can take it off. So let's put it back on, tighten it up, make sure it's good and tight. Put the key in, turn the key clockwise 180 degrees, and then pull your key out. And now your gas cap just freely turns. It won't unscrew, it won't go on anymore. So you can close your little cap. Okay, let's talk about shock absorbers. So in your tool kit that comes with your vehicle, you get this tool. This tool is used to adjust this gold ring on your shock absorber. It locks in just like that. And you can turn the shock absorber or turn the gold ring left or right to make the shock either firmer or softer. I'm not gonna do that because that's something I've honestly never done. I don't wanna mess it up. I'll let someone with more experience do that video. But just know that you can adjust your shock absorbers. And by the way, they're oil-filled shock absorbers on this machine. Okay, a couple of more things you need to know. So in your front tires on this machine, they're supposed to have 14 PSI of air. Rear tires, 18 PSI. Um, so let's talk about submersing this puppy in the water. So the owner's manual says you're not supposed to go more than 0 0.6 meters, which is roughly almost two feet which is about up to maybe here, something like that. And the reason they say that is they don't want you to submerge your engine because right here is the inlet, or the, I'm sorry, the um, exhaust exit. That's where your exhaust comes out. If you get that underwater and your water gets into your exhaust, it could get up in your engine. Also, your um, air intake is right there. Let me back off where you can sort of get a better understanding where it's at. The air intake is right behind the bed. You definitely don't want to get it up that far. These machines are not snorkel, so you don't want water up that, that far at all. So, you know, I'd recommend don't go in water any deeper than your tire is high. So that's just a good safety margin. Okay, here's something I want to know. So if anybody watching this knows the answer, please put it in the comments. If this machine rolls over, will it kill your engine automatically? So do you have rollover protection that will automatically shut off your engine if you roll over? I don't think so, but I would like to know for sure. Okay, so let's talk about max cargo weight. So according to the owner's manual, you're not supposed to put more than 770 pounds in the bed. They call this the box. So in there, no more than 770. Uh, the max cargo weight, which means the, the weight of anything in the box plus the weight of whatever you're towing, your trailer or whatever, plus what's on the trailer should not exceed 1,763 pounds, yeah. So that's not a lot of weight, but it's enough that you can do work around the farm. Okay, a couple more things before I wrap up this video. I forgot to say this about the winch. So you don't want to... Um, exceed the shock threshold on the winch. And what I mean by that is, when you use the winch, the machine should be in park and you should have your parking brake on. And the machine should be stationary if you're trying to pull something to you. If you're trying to pull yourself up out of, say, a mud bog or up a hill, then you put your machine in neutral. Don't drive while your winch is hooked up. Here's why, especially don't drive if you're trying to pull something to you, because the winch has a rating of 3,500 pounds. If you're trying, if the winch is struggling to pull something and you're backing up at the same time, the amount of stress on your winch could greatly exceed 3,500 pounds and go well over 4,000 pounds. And that's gonna tear up your motor or it could damage your winch or your frame. So just be careful and don't overload your winch by trying to move while your winch is connected to something.
unless you're pulling yourself uphill. Okay, a word or two about preventative maintenance. So on this machine, I'm supposed to change the oil at 20 hours and the air filter and then check the transmission oil. I'm very likely gonna go ahead and do it at 10 hours. I've only got about five hours on here now. I talked to the service uh, manager at my dealer shop. He said, check it and change it more often than they advise you to. And I've always done that anyhow. So if my owner's manual says 30 hours, I'll do it at 20. If it says 100 hours, I'll do it at 80 hours. And there's a mileage that goes along in there too. So they usually say something like 20 miles or, I mean, 20 hours or 100 miles or 50 hours or 200 miles. But I change it more frequently than they recommend. And I suggest everybody do that. Also, if you like to do your own maintenance work, when you order supplies, order enough supplies for two maintenance jobs. The reason is there's a couple of times for my machines when I've ordered supplies, everybody was sold out. So I always keep extra on the shelf. And whenever I ride, I always keep extra oil in the glove compartment. I always check my oil before I ride. Now, the first time I do maintenance, I'm gonna let my dealer do it. That was part of our package deal for me to buy this. They did the first maintenance for free. But after that, I'll probably do it myself. Um, anyhow, you have to keep written records. The service manager also said they can refuse to honor your warranty if you don't have records that show that you obeyed the maintenance schedule that's in your owner's manual. So if you go have somebody else do it, keep the receipt and make a note of it. I keep a little notepad in my glove box that's in a Ziploc bag and every time I do anything on the machine, any sort of service, I write down there when I did it what supplies I used and the date I did it and all that. So just keep your records because if you buy an extended warranty, they're probably going to look for any reason not to pay out on your warranty. So don't give them an excuse. Go ahead and keep up with your records pretty good. So anyhow, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope this video did you some good. See you next time.